worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. special welcome to those joining via live stream. Welcome to St. Luke's and to this Come As You Are Eucharist service. We're so glad that you are joining us. I invite you to stand, those in the room and those at home if you wish, for our opening prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you great thanks that once again we are here to worship you. We are here to hear your word to pr pray and to worship in song. Come into this place and teach us as one with great authority, as our gospel lesson says. Help us to take that teaching and that love out into the world. We pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of my Lord God any more or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up from them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put words in the mouth of my prophets, who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Please stand and join us as we sing Praise the Father, Praise the Son. O sovereign God, O matchless King, the saints adore, the angels sing, and fall before the throne of grace. To you belong. Passing time under your wings, I will abide, and every enemy shall flee. You are my hope and victory. Praise the Father. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, 
And when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, whose service is perfect freedom. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In trying to explain that in my uh, children's church at home video this week, um, trying to wanting to really get the kids to understand what that authority must have felt like and looked like to those around Jesus when he entered that synagogue, I had the kids imagine that they were on their front lawn and their mom or dad was teaching them to throw a football, teaching them to pull their elbow back, teaching them that the ball should roll off the tips of their fingers. And then to imagine, say, that, well, number 12, Tom Brady walked into that front lawn and said, hey, let me see the ball. This is how you throw a football. Now that, in the realm of football, is authority, right? Tom Brady, in football, has authority. Now I went on to explain that Jesus' authority, of course, extends far beyond football to include everything. And I'm not going to preach you a children's homily today, I hope. Um, but I do want you to keep in your mind and in your body, as we dig a little bit deeper and a little bit more grown uply into today's scriptures and what they mean, keep that childhood sense of wow, that sort of amazement. Who is this guy? Right? He speaks with authority. That is our Lord. I think it's interesting that authority is laid against scribes. Jesus teaches with authority and not like the scribes. Now, in the word authority itself, we hear the word author. Right? And of course, an author is someone who writes something into existence, who creates. And we know Jesus as the author of our salvation. And scribes, while well, here this morning, today, it means those learned people in the synagogue, the teachers, scribes for us carries with it the sense of taking someone else's ideas, right? Scribes don't create, they copy, they translate, they interpret, they transcribe. They do what I'm trying to do here today, scribes. So in some real sense, this encounter with Jesus in the synagogue is an encounter between created, the creator and the created, between the light itself and its reflection, between like ground zero and everything else. Now just to go all untrialed homily on you, um, I want to think about the, a little bit more language. Because that word authority in Greek, and Greek would have been the language, the, the, in the Greek language, in the Greek translation of the scriptures, um, 
That word is what akousia, translated here in Mark as authority. Well, the passage for um, today from the New Testament is from the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 8. Uh, and I didn't catch the leaflets in time to recognize that, so we heard Deuteronomy. But had we heard the New Testament passage, 1 Corinthians, Corinthians chapter 8, we would have heard Paul writing to the church in Corinth and telling the church in Corinth that they should not use their liberty to be stumbling blocks to someone else. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. But that word liberty is the same word in Greek as the word authority. And that's in our translation, the New Revised Standard. We have authority, liberty. If you look in the NIV, the New International Version, that same word and that same passage from Paul is exercise of right. So do not let the exercise of your right become a stumbling block to someone else. And if you look in the Message Bible, that very same word is freedom. Paul says, don't use your freedom carelessly so that your behavior might throw another believer off track. So I think it's interesting that the very, the single word is so multivalent that it is authority is intertwined with liberty and rights and freedom. And they're all sort of mixed up, one and the same and working with one another. And what we're being told by Jesus is that Jesus is the authority, and we as mortals, and in a broken world, we don't really have the authority, the akousia, to author our situation all the time, right? Life happens to us, illnesses happen to us, things happen to us. We cannot always author our situation. That is an akousia that should, uh, belongs to God alone. But we are granted the akousia, the lower authority, to author our responses. We can author how we behave. We can author uh, an orientation towards hope. We can author our choice for the good. We can author our decision to actually place ourselves under Jesus's authority. So in theory, we have this akousia and what Jesus is asking us, and what Paul is asking us in his letter to the Corinthians, is to use our acousia for the acousia of others, right? We have this authority, which offers us the liberty to create and provide freedom to all. So it's like acousia for acousia for acousia. This kind of crazy uh, interplay of language. And it, when I realized that, it reminded me of this there's a very winning television show out there at the moment. It's called Ted Lasso, if anybody's seen it. It's delightful. Um, and there's one, and it's about an American football coach who is hired uh, to coach the British soccer team. And Lasso is having trouble kind of getting the lingo down. And so he says to his colleague, well, wait a minute, so if I were to lose my job putting cleats in the tr trunk of my car, and his, co and his co coach says, yep, you'd get the boot for putting boots in the boot, right? <laughs> so that's sort of, I mean, that's a very sort of silly thing. It's, it's good to laugh though, but that's sort of where I'm going with this whole acousia, that it's all very intertwined. And we have to think about our authority and our liberty and our freedom and our rights and how we use them and that we use them to the betterment of our community. And I was thinking about that in the aftermath of the events of 9-11. We decided that we were ready to give up some acousia, to use our acousia, to relinquish our acousia, and we learned to take off our shoes and our belts. We learned to put our laptops in a, second, in a separate bin, right? to go through an airport because it was for the good and the public safety of our community. 
And similarly, during these months that we have all lived together, we have given up some authorities, some liberties, some freedoms for, the, for public safety. We wear our masks, we maintain distance, we take our school and our meetings and even our churches online in the interest of public safety. And that is exactly what Paul was talking to the uh, church in Corinth about when he wrote to them about liberty, about freedom, about the exercise of their rights. Because in Corinth at the time, there was a very uh, pagan city. There was a lot of uh, worship of gods that were not the one god. And what would happen is that meat would, that would have been sacrificed to an idol would then later end up in the marketplace. And the question that the Corinthians were sort of uh, trying to figure out and that Paul addresses is, can we eat that meat? And what Paul said was that because they had knowledge that there was only one God, it was really a matter of indifference to them. They could eat it or not eat it. But because not everyone had that knowledge, they should use their acousia in the, for the betterment of everyone and abstain from doing that. Because by relinquishing their freedom, they were helping someone else. And uh, in, in sort of uh, researching that particular story, I found a Luther Seminary professor named Arlen Holquin, or Holquart or something like that, who said that to relinquish one's freedom is not to lose it. It is one way to use it. And I think that was sort of an interesting reframe and it gets us thinking about how we are in our world every day using the authority that we have, um, how we're uh, framing it, how we're giving it away, how we're using it for the betterment of um, the other, um, and, and particularly for those weaker um, than, than we are, so uh, in, whatever, in whatever sense. Um, in that very same passage, Paul talks about knowledge, and that knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. And similarly, the knowledge that Paul's talking about is not two plus two equals four, but rather a knowledge that one kind of carries as a weapon or as something that one lords over someone else. So all of this, all of this, all of our readings today are pointing us towards this sense of uh, sharing what we have for the good of the other. Um, and it was our annual meeting, Derek will tell you that, at, at um, announcement, it was our annual meeting today. And in thinking about this parish and what we've been through, I feel like the annual meeting was a celebration that we are and we want to be that kind of people and that kind of place that build each other up. We are not, we do not want to be stumbling blocks, but building blocks for one another to, um, so that we all rise towards that, uh, towards the full stature of Christ, which is of course our goal. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I, I think that's really pretty much what I want to say today. I, um, I would point you toward that particular, these particular scripture passage, uh, first, the first Corinthians, Paul's first letter, so first Corinthians eight, chapter eight, it's the entirety of the chapter, but it's a good chapter because it is an interesting look at liberty and how we use our liberty and how we can think about being models that help the, the next guy. I think it's Camp Dudley, if there are any Camp Dudley, I'm sure there's some Camp Dudley folks out there, but Camp Dudley's uh, motto is the other fellow first. A bit uh, sexist, but a good model, a uh, good motto, the other fellow first. So I think that's our word for today, is to use our liberty, our freedom, our authority, and to place ourselves underneath the authority of God, and by placing us underneath the authority of God, underneath the banner of Christ, we have access 
to the peace of God, which passes all understanding, to the joy of the Lord, which is our strength, and to a hope that does not disappoint. Amen. Please stand and join us in singing better. for ourselves and others. Loving God and living the church for its mission. mission. That means the earth and light to the world. Breathe fresh life into your people. Give us power to reveal Christ in word and action. Creator of all, lead us and every people into the ways of justice and peace. That we may dissect in freedom and truth. Awaken us in, the, in a sense of wonder for the earth and all that is in it. Teach us to care God of truth, inspire with your wisdom those whose decisions affect the lives of others. That all may act with integrity and courage. 
Give grace to all, all whose lives are linked with ours. May we serve Christ in one another as you are so. God of hope, comfort, and restore all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. May they know the power of your healing love. We remember with thanksgiving all those who have died. Father, into your hands we commend them. We praise you for Mary, Luke, and all your saints who have entered your eternal glory. May their example Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for our outreach partner in Spirica and Stanford. We pray for everyone on our parish, inter parish intercession list. Today, we pray especially for Morgan, Pamelia, Paul, Pat, and Cassie. And we commend to God's care by keeping Christine Shim and, no and Noel Yaney, who died this past week. Your word is a lamp for our feet, in darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy. Help us, O oh God, to trust your love, to serve your purpose, and to praise your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Indeed, peace be with all of you, especially those of you joining us via live stream this evening. So good to have you joining us. A few announcements uh, for tonight. As Susan referenced in her, uh, her sermon, we did have our annual parish meeting uh, earlier today. And really, uh, it's been obviously quite a year with a lot going on both in the parish and in the wider world. And yet, here we are. And so we celebrated all that has been and all that is yet to come in our life together as St. Luke's. We thanked uh, a few vestry members who have completed their terms of service, and we elected new vestry members to continue leading this parish as we go forward. If you want to uh, take a look at any of the things we discussed in that meeting, it will be available online in the coming days, so uh, you can take a look at that. Uh, coming up on Tuesday evening, uh, we'll celebrate the Feast of Candlemas, which is 40 days after Christmas. And as the name implies, we bless our candles that we will use in the coming year, all the candles that we will use in the church throughout the coming year. We'll do this outside, and it's not too late to register. There's a link that's got, been going around the last couple weeks in the, uh, in the parish emails, if you would like to register for that. We are aware there's weather coming in, so we'll, we'll let you know if we need to make any changes to that. But hopefully we'll be able to gather together outside Tuesday evening. Promises to be a lot of fun. And on that note, Ash Wednesday is approaching in a couple weeks. Uh, so we begin to prepare ourselves for Lent uh, and keep an eye out for the services that will be 
taking place on Ash Wednesday. We'll have a couple outdoor services and a live stream service as well. So keep an eye open for that and for the registration link for the outdoor services if you would like to attend. I think that's all I wanted to highlight for today. Uh, if you would like to make an offering and you're, you're watching us online, you can do so via the website, you can mail in a check, whatever works for you. And most of all, thank you for all the ways you continue to support this parish, even in this time when we're unable to gather together in the way that we usually do. With that, walk in love as Christ loves us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. stand as we continue. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and honor are yours, creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You called to a people yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you 
that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so, remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory, and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Let us pray. In union, dear God, with the faithful at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you myself, my soul and body, with the earnest wish that I may always be united to you. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I tie myself to you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Let nothing ever separate you from me. May I live now and forever in your love. Amen.
bottom of page six, let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you this day and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.